Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day wherever you are in the world. And this is going to be a really cool video. I wanted to do something that talked about feature flags for Java Spring Boot. Yeah, it's a really popular and common design pattern in a lot of software applications on the web used in both front end, so JavaScript code bases, as well as backend server based code bases, such as Ruby on Rails, ASP.NET, PHP, and Java Spring Boot. Feature flags are also known as feature toggles. There's a few different variations of the same kind of word wording for them, but it essentially revolves around the idea of being able to flick a feature, quote unquote feature, off and on in your code base during runtime of your application. And this, in fact, settles quite a few sort of problems in web development or in software development in general all at once. One problem it does conveniently minimize is usually when you're working on a new feature for something, you are working on your own feature branch away from the regular trunk or main branch of your application. And over time, if depending on how long you're working on this feature branch, you really start to deviate from what's being introduced into trunk. And then by the time you want to merge this, you're going through and resolving potentially quite a lot of git merge conflicts. So this gives you a way of isolating or separating logic for new features that you want to update behind a flag, which will then prohibit the current users from seeing what's going on unless they're added into a specific group or you toggle it on for that particular user, etc. And this gives you a way of quickly making sure that you are up to date with the latest trunk. This gives you the benefit of staying closely in line with what's on the main branch of your code base. Another problem this solves is that it allows many people to contribute to the same feature. Being able to stay in close alignment with the allows for other teammates to contribute to the same feature that you're working on. And that way it's not all on one specific branch or one person's computer, etc. You've got a way of tackling uh, distributing the load for tackling the problem. Another ability this solves is that you have the ability to enable or disable these features during runtime of your application. So there's no code change required, there's no redeployment required, there's no, uh, none of the regular build deployment process is required when working with feature flags. You've got the ability to flip them on and off, as I said, during runtime of your application to give you live feedback as to what you're working on or what you're testing, which again, makes it really handy for testers to get into your application, or maybe you wanna show your project manager uh, or product, product manager what's going on with a new feature or whoever you're trying to demo it to. At the end of the day, this is a very convenient method of working. And once you get used to working with them, it's going to be a quite common feature that you're going to put into your own application going forward. It just makes things a lot easier, even if it's your own code base that only you are maintaining. It makes it easier to really develop things quickly and gives you a neat little dashboard to play with and have fun with. All right. So as we can see, we are going to be using a library called Toggles. T-O-G-G-L-Z, and this is available, as you can see on the website here. I'll post a link in the description down below. And this gives you a brief rundown on how to use it and what's involved. But we will go through some code and we will get this up and running in short order. And I can it will demonstrate to you very quickly how useful these feature flags really are. Okay, so let's go back to start.spring.io. Let's create a new project here. Let's go with a Maven project. We're gonna choose Java 3.1.0 for Spring Boot. And we're just gonna call this one uh, Spring 
boot three feature flag demo. Okay, and we'll leave it as a jar file uh, using Java 17. And then for our dependencies, we're just gonna be adding Spring Web and Lombok. And we'll use, we'll make use of H2 and Spring Data. And that should be the only four we need. Web, Lombok, H2, Spring Data. And there we go. Hit the generate button, download the zip file, and extract it to your favorite place on your hard drive. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. I've got the project open, and I won't bother running it firsthand because we know by now that when we run a project from start.spring.io, it'll work without issue right out of the box. So the first thing we'll need to do is add the jar support for the uh, toggles library. So let's go into our POM XML file. So let's go into our POM XML file and let's go down to, let's just go after Lombok here and let's create a new dependency. We're gonna be adding two dependencies. Okay, we're gonna be adding two dependencies here. We've got one for the toggles console spring boot starter. We're gonna be using version 4.0.1. That's just the one that's out right now. Uh, I'm sure by the time you view this video, it could be possible that there's newer versions. So maybe just double check the Maven repository if you're running into any issues. And then we're also adding one called the Toggles Web MVC Spring Boot Starter Artifact ID. So with those two artifacts entered into your POM XML, just let it refresh and update itself. And then what we are gonna do is go through our uh, first thing we're going to touch our, we're just going to use a bunch of common properties that I've done in a lot of my videos. But if you haven't, if this is the first video you're seeing, then we're defining our server port to be 8080. We're defining our data source uh, to be uh, just a local file-based database stored in slash data slash demo. And it'll be using the H2 database. And here's the path to the console, which will be slash h2 dash console on the web browser so these are all very common properties that i use in a lot of my videos so now let's add a few ones for toggles and we will be periodically jumping back and forth from this one okay so let's add a toggles flags or toggles settings that's a better description for this so first of all uh, let's use toggles enabled equals true. And a convenient way of declaring features that you want in your application, you can do so right from your application properties file. So we'll add a few of them soon. We won't add them just yet, uh, but we'll, we'll set up some basic toggles defaults right now and then come back to this shortly. So let's add another one, toggles console enabled equals true. We want to enable the web console. We want to define the web console path. So let's use toggles console.path is slash toggles dash console. I kind of just want to match what we have for the H2 console. Uh, that way it gives you a little bit of consistency between the two. And finally, toggles console secured equals false. So this is on our local machine and anyone can access it. Okay, so let's leave this for now. We've got these initial flags set up and what we're gonna do is, the game plan here is that I wanna create a, a typical model that you might set up in an application. So I'm gonna use one called product. So we're gonna have a basic product. So I'll just call a, sorry, create a new folder called models and let's create a product model. And this will just be a very basic entity, oops, entity data. Let's give it some basic product properties. Okay, so we've got these properties all resolved now. So we've got a basic ID, which is gonna be generated using a sequence to track the ID of the product. We've got a name field, a description, 
a price, and create it at updated at timestamps. Pretty simple, generic, basic type of product. So let's create a repository for that. So we'll create a new folder called repositories. And let's create a product repository file. Extend the JPA repository with product and long. Easy peasy, okay. And now finally, let's add a Let's add a product controller. So we're just gonna add a rest controller that we're gonna hit with Postman to demonstrate the use of feature flags in this system. Well, demo is probably better. System is too big a word here. Okay, so we're using a rest controller annotation and let's use the request mapping slash API slash E1 slash products auto-wired with our product repository. And then we want to inject the feature manager object of toggles. And then we're gonna create a single method here. So this will be pretty simple and straightforward. So we're gonna create, oh man, those, those hover boxes. I'm really sorry, everyone. It makes it so hard to do these recordings sometimes. A get mapping for slash foo. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna be creating a new product and we're just gonna return it out to the uh, web service. So one thing I did forget to do in product.java is just add no args constructor uh, annotation. Okay, so let's do product, product equals new product. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is product, we're gonna set a name of product one, whoops, product one. We're gonna set a description of, this is a, how about this is a cool product. And then we are going to set created at to just be local date time now and then finally we're going to set a price so product set price and let's do um, sorry not quotes let's do let's say 499 and then we're going to return product repository save product so it's going to save it's going to try and persist the new product in the database which will then generate an id for it and then it'll return it back out to the web service and we'll see it from postman okay so this is a really basic rest service that we've got set up for our products and i think we have everything in place to get started right away into our Spring Boot dashboard extension. Let's start it up and let's just make sure that everything is starting. Okay, so it looks like everything is up and running. We're on port 8080. So let's go ahead and open up Postman. So here we are in Postman. So I'm gonna do a get to localhost port 8080 and then it was API v1 products and I think it was foo, I ended up calling it. So it's a get request to foo. So it should create that new product for us. And there we go. Hopefully this shows up properly. So we've got the start of a very basic product system. We've got a way of storing this product in the database. And we now want to make use of feature flags. Let's say our marketing manager comes to us and he or she says, hey, what we're thinking of doing is increasing our price six months from now. So we want a way of toggling this new price increase off and on, which will affect sort of everyone at once. And that way we don't have to, uh, I don't know, uh, hand hard code other things in or you know, do any code changes for testing out this new price rollout. No problem. So we've got our toggles flag in place. So let's stop the server. 
we've got our toggles libraries in place, sorry, I should say. And so what we're gonna do is define a new feature. So we're gonna go back to our uh, applications properties file here, and we can create a new setting here, toggles features. So basically feature flags. So we can reference them with the help of the features uh, collection in this properties setup. Okay, so we wanna call this one price increase. So we can give it pretty much whatever name we want. So we're gonna call this one price increase. And by default, it will not be enabled. Okay, so we've got our features and then the name of the feature, and then there's an, an enabled flag, which we can use either as true or false, which will basically, you know, once this once this feature flag is in the system, then if it's enabled by default, then it'll just be enabled for everyone starting up. But we want to, I want to show you how to enable and disable them via the web console. So let's just create this one right here, price increase, okay? And we have to create one more thing in code as a way of linking the feature flags that you're defining in the application.properties and within our code base. So back in our project here, we're gonna create a new folder, just call it config. You may already have a config folder, so it just I would just maybe throw it in there. And I'm calling mine feature flags. And it will be a enum. And it will implement feature or implements, sorry, not implement. Okay, and then I'll just give give this a label, which we don't really see anywhere, but uh, it might help us out. Price increase, and that's it we have for the CNUM. So here in this label, we could put anything. Maybe we wanna put price increase for, you know, uh, what's August? Let's say September, September 1st, 2023. So it's just a way of, like a human way of uh, letting us know, letting developers know what this feature flag is used for. And we've got everything set up here. And now all we need to do, this is pretty cool. We've got our feature manager injected into this controller. So all we need to do is make use of this feature manager. So if feature manager is active and then the name, the name of the feature flag. So in our case, it is feature flags dot price increase. And so this is our feature flags enum. Okay, so if the feature flag is activated, then what we want to do is we want to set set the new price that marketing has given us. So they're telling us to set it to 99.99. That's quite a huge jump. I don't know how they're going to sell this, but that's marketing for you. And that's all we have to do. So let's start this server up and running. If everything looks okay at the console here, okay, great, everything looks all right. Let's go ahead and let's do another get just to verify that things are looking good. Okay, so we've got we've still got our original price, $4.99. This is a cool product, product one. And then what then let's go into the actual toggles console. Okay, so let's go to HTTP localhost port 8080, and then toggles-console. That's what we defined in the application.properties. And we get a neat little dashboard. Let's zoom in on this. We get a neat little dashboard of all of the feature flags that are currently enabled in our system. So right now we've got one for price increase and it's disabled. So let's go ahead and enable that. And then without restarting the server, let's do a get on our same request. And we'll see now that our price is using the feature flag to return the updated 99.99. That's way cool. And just to show you that this, how useful this is, we can also disable it. And let's go back, hit send again, and we're back to the regular 499. So if you go into the actions 
uh, settings widget here, you can do things uh, act under activation strategy. There's a whole bunch of different ways of creating a different way of rolling this out. So you can roll this out to everyone all at once, or you can roll this out to different IP addresses or different usernames, user roles, or through a query parameter that you've got in the browser. Uh, there's many, many ways here, which is really cool. So it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility depending on what kind of environment you're working, depending what kind of environment you're, you, you're deploying your application from and what you're using to really give you the option of how to properly roll this out for users. Okay, so that's that's that one. So let's add another one just for fun. So let's go ahead and stop the server. Toggles, features, description, update. And this time we're gonna enable this one. By default, it'll be enabled for everyone. So we've got a description update. So that means back in our feature flag, Xenum, let's just create that right now. Uh, description, update, and for a label, We'll just give it a label of, whoops, if I can spell that right, we'll just give the, this a label of um, new description. Not really very helpful label, but you get the idea. And back in our controller, let's create another if. So if feature manager is active, feature flags description update, then what, then let's set the description. This is a brand new description and this will be enabled by default for everyone. So let's go ahead and start this up. Okay, so if we do a send, we'll see right away, this is a brand new description and we've got our default price of 499 and we've got the updated description. So we can go back into the web console. Let's refresh this. Okay, so now we've got enabled by default description update. So let's disable the description update and let's enable the price increase and go back to Postman, do another get. And we've got a, this is a cool product and 99.99. And just for fun, we'll enable both. Enable everything, enable all the things. And let's go ahead and hit get. And we've got, this is the new description and the updated price of $99.99. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. The source code for this will be available in the link in the description down below. I'll put it on my GitHub repo. And I really hope you had a lot of fun going through this idea, this feature flag implementation. It's a really cool way of adding flexibility to your Spring Boot application. And with proper use, it can really help you stay really productive and as well as allow a lot of your teammates to contribute to every, to any new feature that you're working on at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked what you saw, just give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for updates when I get them out. And I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Peace.